But yeah, um, it was it was it was that other guy. It was him and McMeekin who were standing up in this game though in that forward pack and taking mm-hmm. all the, the the you know the kick returns, but getting them on the front foot by winning collision in those impacts and then you know doing the tough work when it was needed. Absolutely. No, so, yeah, fair play. And I would say on the balance of it, just about a deserved result for Castleford. I think they did enough to get the win. Um, Wayfield, <laughs> didn't do it, Wayfield didn't do enough in the first half to, to assert their dominance in terms of points on the scoreboard. They played well Cass, enough. They but played they well enough but didn't convert. Yeah, you're right. And that's a problem. Castleford were fluffing their lines in the first half as much as anything else. I'm thinking, like, where Webster spilled the ball and, and things like that. So, great defence, though, on, of the, course. on the great goal line defence. Yeah. I mean the odd, the, the odd opportunity that Cast did manage to muster up in that first uh, forty minutes, or even just you know before they scored, um, I mean, were all good. There was a lot of good goal line defence as well from Wakefield, so you've hmm. got to compliment them on that side of the game. It's just like you say when they had the opportunity to to stretch it out, they didn't score enough tries. No, true. Okay, what did the stats tell us then? Uh, despite fewer tries and a worse. Meter per carry figure. The numbers overall back Cast for the win in this. Cast didn't have few. Did Cast have few tries? No, they didn't. I don't know what's written here. No, they must have had the same number of tries unless they were kicking a shed load of penalty goals. Uh, one, two, three, they had the same number. No, it's four tries. tries. I don't know. What, I don't know where that's come from. Anyway, uh, worst meter per carry. Figure the, the overall numbers back cash for the win in this 206 more metres, 6 to 2 in clean breaks, 1.2% better team tackle success for the visitors were all areas that helped them get the win. There you go. So, individually, who stood out for us then? Well, Greg Eden with his try 218 metres and two clean breaks. So, he also did the, did the getting out of his own end work, which he hasn't always done successfully this year. He's dropped a few balls in those positions. Mm. Uh, Jake Webster, a try 105 metres, two clean breaks. Mike McMinnikin a try, 104 metres. Ben Roberts with a try assist in 102 metres, and Nathan Massey with 119 metres. So it was a close one thing on the scoreboard then, so you'd anticipate some strong performances from Wakefield players. And we definitely got that, particularly from their outside backs. But we start with the hooker Kyle Wood, a try, a try assist, 44 tackles, doing it both ways like all the best hookers are doing in Super League this year. Um, ben Jones Bishop with a try, 146 metres. Mason Caton Brown with 132 metres. Bill Tupu with 116 metres. And then into the pack, Dean Hadley worked hard. He had a try assist and 11 marker tackles, so making a big influence there. Yeah, I know this much is true. Right, over to Friday night then. Huddersfield Giants 40, Widness Vikings at nothing in front of 5,253. Uh, refereed by Mr. T. Grant. I, I don't even know his Grant. first name. Is it Tom Grant? There you go. He's as familiar to you as he is to me. Well, the Super League website had um, G- uh, Gareth Hewer referee in this game, which is not true. So he must have like pulled out or something late on because t- it's Tom Grant's first Super League game, as far as I'm aware. Definitely yeah. his first of this year. Well, at least he got uh, to blow the whistle a lot for a lot of tries. Um, yeah, so we start with Paul. We start and finish with Paul Ludo Lewis on the reviews. He said, "Great news earlier in the day of signing Rangi on a witness and Danny Walker on a double witness, and then they go and do that." Although I didn't bother going to this one, as like the players, I've given up until the middle eights. <laughs> the only plus is getting battered by Huddersfield might actually condemn Warrington to the middle eights. A real catch twenty two, and by a weird coincidence, catch twenty two is Kevin Brown's most impressive st- season stat. Oh. Oh, we're not we're not bitter though, are we? We're not bitter. It was it was just a humping from start to finish, wasn't it? This one, Huddersfield, even Sean of of you know Jake Mamo, fluid in attack. Was it was their fluid in attack, or just witness hadn't turned up? Um, you know, always want to credit the good play, mm. but from the highlights I saw, those tries were very easy to score. Yeah, they got off to a good start, didn't they? They were sort of they were going a point a minute for the first twenty minutes or so. Yeah, oh. but like I say, they were easy to score tries. I mean, Adam mm. O'Brien. <laughs> Barely threw a dummy and went over in front, went between everyone, and there wasn't even a, a an attempted tackle to keep him up. Really, and it's a, that is the thing is you should see that coming from Adam O'Brien. He does go to that a lot. Yeah, he scores. He scored mm. play, a few tries this year already. Yeah. Um, Akuma Ty's try. I mean, I know the game was totally done in the in the seventy seventh minute, but what a basic defence for that one. Yeah. I, I, look, and, and this Channel Wakeman try was obviously a barge over close to the effort type thing too I just think they were from the highlights I saw mm. they were terrible I think the improvement in Huddersfield so let's get off let's get off terrible witness and get on to improving Huddersfield the improvement the improvement in Huddersfield for me coincides with Ryan Inscliffe being deployed 
in the loose. And I think Huddersfield fans would be inclined to agree with me as well. It's definitely more his natural position than, than that sort of contriving him as a hooker. And I think it frees him up to, to have more of an impact and be more of a leader on the field. Um, more of a positive leader on the field as well. Um, oh, Hinchcliffe's try, yeah. God, how basic was that one? They were all pretty... I mean, no, but that was the worst. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't single that one out. Mm. All, all of them were basic, but that was embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I, have, I have no defence for it. I'm, I'm trying to look across the witness lineup and 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 see and see positives. Really, I'd be interested to see what you come up with in terms of the stats. But um, look, Huddersfield, a, 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 you know, they're shrugging away. They could surprise a few people come the eights if they make it in. They could upset some people that they're going to struggle to make the four. No, of course, yeah, I don't, um, I don't suspect they'll do that. But they'll they'll te- what I think they'll do is they'll have an impact in terms of taking points off top four contenders. If they get in there, because I believe it was Tyler fantastic. Dickinson's first ever winning appearance for the season as well, wow. so he'll have enjoyed that one off the bench. Big relief for that young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But I mean, looking across that side, look, you know, ranking slots in at fullback really nicely for them, doesn't he? Um, young Daniel McIntosh looks more of a winger than a fullback, and he bagged a try for them. This Bruff and Ridgeard... He looks good on both sides as yeah. well, Darnell McIntosh. Wherever his exactly, lady scored yeah. tries, I think, like you say, it can be more instinctive on the wing, mm. whereas... It, when he's got space and time, I don't think it's his. I don't think he's quite knows how to use that well enough. I yet. think I think it's just the natural aptitude for rugby league. You need more of at fullback. I mean, you look at young Jack Walker over at Leeds, and he's got that aptitude in spades, hasn't he? I think Dana McIntosh is more of an instinctive player and more of a an athlete and a finisher, which suits him to being to being out on the wing, and that's where they're playing him. So and he's and he's getting tried. The Bruff and Ridgard halves combination seems to be uh, seems to be going well. And Ridgard did the kicking for Huddersfield, didn't he? Um, yeah, um, and, and helped up, beef up their scoreline for them. Yeah, having him back was a. Uh... I think a big influence on this game for them. Mm. Jordan Rankin, you lose a bit from Mamo because of just how um, exciting he was, yeah. how around the ball he always was. Rankin's a little bit more an extra half, yeah. but the way he contributed to the McGilvery tries, uh, for example, mm-hmm. was a demonstration of what you get out of him. And then when you've got like... Basically, you've got a team full of standoffs in terms of the <laughs> passing ability yeah. when you've got uh, Rankin, Kudjo, Gaskell and Bruff there. Yeah. So when you've got a steady player like Richard to sort of guide them through with a strong team around him so he's not lost in the flow of being not the fastest, not the yeah. most physical and, and all of that, it, it all works around them. And even without Seb Hifo, the dummy halves were both able to get stuff going. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so what did the stats tell us on this one? Huddersfield made 325 Seven more meters, six to two in clean breaks, one point one percent better team tackle success. So they're not massively uh, impressive, but still strong wins there. Mm. They also had a huge fifty-seven more carries than the Vikings, and this was helped massively by a sixteen to eight penalty count and a twenty to eleven error count, both against the visitors who appear to have ever thrown the towel in or self-destructed. Or yeah. this was not. I mean, you'd be worried if you were Dennis Betts if this is the attitude they're going to take. I think you're going to want to make some serious changes for the next two games to show you need to book up your ideas, kids. Let's talk very, very briefly about the ace. Do you think Widnes are in danger of of ending up in a million-pound game, or do you think they'll be all right? I think think they'll be all right. They need to get consistency out of what they have in the front row. Hmm. And I think they'll have enough skill in people like I don't know if Hambry's ever going to come back from injury but even people like Corey Thompson Chris Bridge Joe Meller and Rangy Chase, Chase yeah. they've got enough skill there to to get through See, I would right. I would feel mm. so they might be involved in some high scoring games but I think they'll score a lot of points there you go ok um, individually who stood out for us Jerry McGilvery two tries 182 metres two clean breaks Shannon Wakeman a try 111 metres Darnell McIntosh a try 110 metres Sam Rapera 125 metres Cruz Leeming threw in three try assists there you go. anybody stand out for the witness Viking yeah Chris Bridge made a lot of metres 147 metres and three successful offloads Chris Houston worked hard whilst he still was a bit of a penalty machine 44 tackles 11 marker tackles Hep Cahill what we've come to expect from him really 43 tackles 10 marker tackles there you go ok so so elsewhere on Friday night, it was St. Helens 19, Hull FC 12 in front of 9,910 at the Totally Wicked Stadium, refereed by Phil 
Bentham. 9,910. I thought that was a knock-on count for a second. Possibly. It was, was a scrappy, scrappy fair, wasn't it? We start with Tyler Cass, fan. He said, frustrating first half in the wet conditions. The second half wasn't much better. So I was amazed that this game probably served up the try of the season. Totally unexpected piece of brilliant handling and body twisting from Percival with a try that deserved to win the game. Definitely. Rich Langley said, injury curse and ball <laughs> retention. We avoided the first and managed the, managed the second and we win the game. Simple as I just hope that this isn't another mini run of losses as we have seen earlier. No lack of effort, but for whatever reason, the lads just lost some of the basic skills. Nothing's won in July, mind you. John Scott at John Scott 15 said, Not sure how we only lost by seven points. So many brain farts, impossible offloads, not playing to the conditions, time after time. Back to back sets conceded on our line, some heroic goal line D, but not good enough all over the park. And Sarah Scoots McKenzie got in touch and said, You know it's going to be a bad night when you realise halfway down the M62 <laughs> that your trousers have a hole in them. Thank goodness for Tesco. The match was truly terrible. I'd have to think what our completion rate was. It was a good job our goal line defence was good, or we'd have conceded 50. Came home via the M6, the M56, the M57, the M1, the M18, and the M62. And a number of roads just to, uh, so a number of roads. Two, just to add further to the excitement of the night. So it must have been a tricky trip home from St Helens. It seems like every time Huller across the Pennines are getting serious getting diversions, trouble. which is, uh, is unfortunate, but mm. these guys plug away, um, which is great. And it's a heck of a trip on a Friday night. So uh, well, when they've got these motorway conditions for certain. Yeah, mm. so well done to the, uh, the Scoots clan. Yeah, but on the field, though, it was... Look, as good as the Mark Percival try was, and we'll get on to that in a bit, I'm sure, it wasn't a great game, I didn't feel. It was attritional and sort of just very scrappy generally. I, I saw a couple of clever sneed kicks in when he forced the low max knock on early on and thought, oh, they're going to play the conditions quite well here, Hull, and maybe that'll serve them well, but it wasn't to be. It was, it was as they said on commentary, it started to become that knock on a thon, didn't it? Yeah, they still had opportunities, you mm. know. I, I think of the Albert Kelly. Like his leg went, didn't it? And uh, when when they could have had a break and yeah. stuff, and I just think that this shot that you'd have thought they'd have learned the lesson. We talked about thinking they'd have learned the lesson from the fact that they threw away the game against Castleford, but they certainly weren't. <laughs> they weren't done with this throwing away games malarkey, and they no. were. They, it wasn't just stupid offloads though that they were dropping the ball. It was. Repetitively in contact, one up carries dropping the ball in their own half. I think in the second half, they didn't have like a set of six in the opposition 20. And for the first 25 minutes or so of the second half, they really put themselves under pressure. And the fact that St. Helens only managed to win by the small amount they managed to win by yeah. is symptomatic of them having. Well, they were missing some a half key out, player, weren't some, they? Yeah. So, so a, bit, a little bit of that going on, a little bit of mm. trying to adapt still to this new tactical approach that that Holbrook's introduced with these wide passes, then quick short blindside yeah. routines, and and it's it's working its way into the systems. But they had a few players back in who didn't play in the game against Leeds as well so that's, in that those makes systems, that touch, doesn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> well, this so, was a night for Matty Smith, wasn't it? As well, in those conditions. Are made for a Matty Smith. It wasn't wet enough for Matty Smith. To dominate. Exactly, that's what I mean. He likes it, if anything, he likes it wetter. He does, he uh, likes proper rain. Yeah, exactly. Not that fine not rain. Not that fine rain, no, no exactly. He like big old fat rain. Yeah. He, uh, but he, I think if Matty Smith had been on the field for St. Ellen, you might have seen another 20, 25 points yeah. come their way. And I can't see who the difference maker would have been for Hull FC because. They had their first choice team out. Yeah, yeah. The Basically, certain. other than Gareth Ellis, mm. they had their first choice. You would say they had the first choice team out, would you not? Yeah, well, it's one, one, to, one to seven was, squad numbers one to seven, wasn't it? Um, Taylor Houghton Bowden. One to nine, mate. Yeah, 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 one to nine. Yeah, Taylor Houghton Bowden had a, he's, he's been, you know, he's a more than serviceable Do you know what? starting he's, prop he's forward. In, I really rate He's in the uh, sort Brown. of unsung hero. Definitely. Um, what's, the, what's the category we're doing? The... Sloppies at the end of the year. Oh, the God, yeah. um, most underrated. Most underrated. Yeah, I think definitely. Bowden's in the conversation for that. I think this might have been his hundred and fiftieth game or something like that. And mm. uh, for, for the black and whites, it, 
he's a good player. Yeah. They've got a lot of good players in that team though, Tom, and they all yeah. drop the ball. That's a strong side that looking at that from from one to thirteen. Even Washbrook and Minicello and Mano at the back row of the uh, at the back row of the scrum. That's that's impressive. That's a side that should be competing more and have enough experience not to be as error strewn as they were. And ultimately, well, this, that's what tells for them. This game it? wasn't just interrupted by Hull FC errors, though. Let's not forget St Helens' errors. I mean. 